Have you been wondering what's going on with the Playboy Mansion ever since Hugh Hefner passed away? Well, I haven't. To be honest, I kind of forgot about this house. That was until one of you guys sent me an article showing what the place looks like nowadays. And let's just put it this way, the Playboy Mansion isn't looking so great. It's one of the most famous private homes in LA, the Playboy Mansion. It's the best real estate in Los Angeles. Welcome to the Playboy Mansion. Come on in. Playboy bought it for a million. They sold it to Metropolis for a hundred million dollars. So what exactly happened to the Playboy Mansion? What caused its fall from its glory days as the premier party house in Home B Hills to an oversized dilapidated shack in dire need of a makeover? Now this property is not only considered one of the most infamous homes in all of LA, but it's also looked at as one of the most prime pieces of real estate that you can get. One of the most expensive properties to be sold in LA. What you get is you get privacy, you get five acres, you get history. It's amazing. You just feel like the sense of, it's got real atmosphere. We've got 22 foot, you know, high ceilings here in the Grand Hall. Uh, look at, the, you know, check out all the hand carved wood. Today, let's look at the history of the Playboy Mansion, all of the drama surrounding the place, including the mold. Yeah. There was a lot of mold. And of course, we need to dive into as much footage as we can dig up on what the house looks like now, what the grotto looks like now, and what the future holds for the Playboy Mansion. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't exactly prepared for the rabbit hole that I was about to go down when I started researching the Playboy Mansion. It's got kind of a dark history, and nowadays, a little bit of controversy too. We'll get into that in a minute, but first, where exactly is the Playboy Mansion, you might ask, especially all of you guys who are watching this video who don't live in LA. The address of the place is 10236 Charing Cross Road. And if we zoom out a little bit, so you guys are gonna see, we've got Beverly Hills and Rodeo Drive down over here to the right, Century City down here, Bel Air is over here. For any of you OGs watching the channel, the one is right up in like, right, right in this pocket. Yeah, right there. So. It's in a really prime area for sure. When you look at the property address on Google Maps, if you get in pretty close, it actually shows you the lot lines. So you can see one side of the property is on Mapleton Drive, the other side is over here on Charing Cross, and then the back side of the property just backs right up to that golf course. And then if we drop this guy down here on Street View on the Charing Cross side of the property, you guys will see very private. These hedges are probably like 15 feet tall, but not a lot going on. Behind these gates are, uh, well, a bunch of construction. We'll talk about that here in a few minutes. Last thing real quick on the location. So just look at the price of the real estate in this like surrounding area. We've got this one here, $62.5 million. It's a 31,000 square foot mansion. This one over here, 40 million bucks. It looks like a palace. This is 33,000 square feet. We got this one, $155 million. I think a lot of you guys know this house. This one's 56,000 square feet. Up here, 65 million bucks, 30,000 square feet, 85 million bucks. This one is 21,000 square feet. This one's $55 million. 30,000 square feet. I mean, you guys get the point. Basically the entire area surrounding the Playboy Mansion is full of just absolute compounds. These are some of the biggest estates and best estates that you can get literally in all of LA. So yeah, very valuable property, very desirable property. That's probably why Hefner wanted this place so bad. But what I didn't realize when I started doing the research for this video is that the mansion in LA actually was not the original Playboy Mansion. Hugh Hefner originally set up shop in Chicago at this gem of a house at 1340 North State Parkway. Hef bought the property for $400,000 in 1959 when he was first building his empire. Here, after he bought it, he added a pool, a steam room, a sauna, a bowling alley, and a movie theater to the house. And of course, a bunch of crazy parties were thrown here too. What happened to the original Playboy Mansion has kind of an interesting timeline. When Hef was ready to leave Chicago, he leased his mansion out to a local art institute for just $10 per year. Then not long after that, he ended up donating the house to the art institute. But ultimately, the art institute ended up selling the mansion to a developer. This was in 1993. So what that developer did is they converted this mansion into a bunch of individual luxury condos 
None of them are for sale right now, but I looked at a few of them that have sold kind of recently. Like this one sold in November 2019 for 2.7 million. And yeah, it's a nice spot. Like they have this really nice central courtyard area. Here is what the living room inside looks like. Here's a picture of how they finished the kitchen. Here's another one I found on Zillow. This one was last up for sale for 2.5 million a couple of years ago. The place looks exactly the same from the street. This unit inside must have been remodeled by someone at some point. It's got a different vibe than the last one. This one's a little bit more modern. Pretty cool what they did with the place. I, it's very rare you see someone take a big mansion like this and cut it up into condos. Like some people do that with office towers and other commercial buildings. And yeah, as far as I can tell, this would not be all that bad of a place to live if you wanted to live in this area and you had $2.5 million to spend. Anyways, back to LA, it was 1971 when Hugh Hefner bought the Playboy Mansion in Homebly Hills. He was dating a girl named Barbie Benton at the time. Barbie was a model and an actress, and she's credited with actually being the one who convinced Hef to buy the Playboy Mansion in LA. And I want you guys to guess how much Hugh Hefner paid for this place. So remember, it was 1971, we're talking about a five acre property and a mansion sitting on it in one of the best parts of LA. Go ahead, pause the video, put your guess down in the comments. What do you guys think? What did he pay for it back then? He paid only $1.1 million. 1.1 million is equivalent to around 8 million in today's dollars. So that is a ton of money, yes, but still, it's an absolute bargain for such a prime piece of real estate. And have bought the property from a guy named Lewis Statham. I guess Lewis invented a bunch of stuff, like a device used to measure pressure when you're looking for oil. He also invented a blow flow meter that is placed in your heart. And according to like everything ever written about this guy, it sounds like Lewis was also an avid chess player. So yeah, the Playboy Mansion as we all know it today started in 1971. And from that point forward, this place would host some of the wildest parties that the city would ever see. Some of Hollywood's most legendary parties have been held at Hef's house. The former home of Playboy magazine founder Hugh Hefner a man who has forgotten more about parties than we'll ever know. And this, of course, is the infamous grotto. This is called the van room, and it's because it looks like the inside of the back of a van, I guess. So many stars have partied in Hef's house over more than four decades, and oh, the walls could talk. This was not your usual house. It was set up to entertain for sure with an 80 person staff. Yes, an 80 person staff for a private single family home. It had a 24 hour gourmet kitchen and the parties would feature burlesque dancers performing in giant martini glasses. It was a hot spot for celebrities and one of the craziest features to me, the Playboy Mansion was the sole residence in all of Los Angeles that actually had a zoo license. Former Bunny said there was nothing like a Playboy party and there never will be anything the same as Hef's parties again. She said they were wilder than you could even imagine. And what I thought was interesting is another one of Hef's ex-girlfriends said there was actually a good mix of wild and rowdy party nights mixed with more mellow movie nights where everybody got a free dinner and people would just come over for a meal and a movie just to chill. Donald Trump attended the parties. Snoop Dogg was a regular guest. John Lennon went. He actually had a story where he burned a cigarette into one of Hef's expensive pieces of art. There were actually even rumors and blueprints showing showing that some celebrities had secret underground tunnels from their nearby mansions to the Playboy Mansion, although I think this rumor was officially debunked. These parties had rock bands, they had DJs, basically everything that you read about the parties that were happening here make it sound a lot more like an event center than a house that's sitting in the middle of the neighborhood. Fast forward to 2015 and things kind of started to slow down a little bit around the Playboy Mansion. Hugh Hefner was getting old, he was 89 at the time, and he decided decided to put the house up for sale for a big asking price of $200 million. Check it out, even though that sale happened like six years ago, there's still a handful of photos up on Redfin from that listing. They started with this one as the cover photo. I mean, this place straight up looks like something out of a movie. The property itself, or at least the architecture side of the property is decked out with all kinds of crazy stuff, like this lion statue. Random photo of, I'm pretty sure, one of Hef's girlfriends sitting in the lawn. 
Don't know why this ended up in the listing photos though. There's this grand staircase, a bunch of old artwork, tons of intricate woodwork. Here's the entrance to the home movie theater. I guess there was a bunch of movie parties that were hosted at this house like during the week. If you were one of the lucky few people to get invited to watch one of those movies, this is what it looks like inside. Nice office. A little bit dated, at least with the green carpet, but I can appreciate it, and I definitely like that Eames lounger in the corner. And they rounded out with a photo of Hef's bedroom, which, from what I understand, is seating area with a fireplace, huge oversized bed there. In the back, I think, was like a makeup area or hangout area for the girls, and then he's just got a bunch of just pictures with him and random people on the walls, a bunch of trophies and trinkets and just things that people have given to him over the years. Yeah, this bedroom's probably like half the size of my house. So when they put that thing up on the market, since Hef was still living in the house and he was still alive, there was kind of a unique condition that was attached to the listing. It basically said that whoever bought this house, the deal would need to be structured as a living estate, which said that Hugh Hefner would be allowed to continue to live in the home until he passed away. It didn't take long to find a buyer. Just six months after they put the house up on the market for sale, in August of 2016, billionaire Darren Metropolis bought the Playboy Mansion for $100 million, exactly half of the original asking price. Here's a picture of the buyer Darren all suited up at work, and this is a photo of him at one of the Playboy Mansion parties in 2012 with Snoop Dogg. Interesting. And as far as what this guy does for work, Darren, by some sources, is known as the Twinkie King. He and his family made their fortune selling Chef Boyardee, Paps Blue Ribbon, Bumblebee Tuna, and of course, Twinkies. And he actually already lived right next door to the Playboy Mansion, so I guess his goal was to join the two properties to create one massive compound. Darren's plan from the day he bought the place was to do a pretty in-depth or thorough renovation because just after all of those years of parties that were happening at the house, place had become pretty run down. The Playboy Mansion has fallen on hard times since its glory days. I heard the, the mansion was a bit of a wreck on the inside. <laughs> it was a very beautiful property, but it had some, you know, gross carpet and a lot of dogs. Like dog feces that was would be like sitting on the carpet. Because the girls that would live there would bring their animals with them. I got very sick and we had the house checked for mold and there was toxic mold everywhere. Really? It ended up being like a $2 million remediation at the house. But even with a gut renovation needed, the new owner definitely never intended on tearing the house down. In fact, at this point, he can't. In March of 2018, he entered an agreement with the city of Los Angeles, which will permanently protect the Playboy Mansion from demolition. They put what's called a permanent protection covenant on the home, which means no future owners will be able to demolish this house. Hugh Hefner passed away on September 27th, 2017, at the age of 91 years old, at the Playboy Mansion, and this marked the moment where the new owner was free to move forward with his plan. From what I could tell, the Twinkie King, aka Darren, started renovations on the house right away. There's a bunch of progress shots that have been taken by drones over the years, showing the grounds all dug up and basically just turned to dirt. The pool was gutted and is in the middle of renovation as well, including the infamous grotto. And it's obvious there's plenty of work happening inside with all the construction cars and trucks parked all around the property all the time plus the scaffolding that's been put up around different parts of the home, probably to either restore or refurbish different parts of the exteriors as well. The Daily Mail dug up that plans filed with the LA Planning Department show the construction includes a new basement below the original building, partially demolishing the staff house, and building a new 4,400 square foot additional structure that includes a gym and a garage. And according to the same report, the interior work, I guess, is remodeling the kitchen, the family room, the bathrooms, the servants' quarters. I don't think they're called that anymore, but those, and also they're adding a bunch of skylights throughout the house as well. I cannot imagine being the superintendent on this job and having to walk the job site every day just to make sure that things are moving along. Like we're talking 20,000 square feet of house and then another five acres of land, it would take you like half a day to do a walkthrough. I do wanna say though that even though a lot of work is happening here, it sounds like the goal is to still restore the mansion to its original glory, 
They're not gonna just throw a bunch of random new age modern finishes in here. Now before we wrap the video today, I do want to address the elephant in the room and that's the fact that unfortunately since Hef passed away, there's actually a lot of girls who have come out and said that they don't have the best of memories from their times partying and living in the Playboy Mansion. Hi guys, welcome to another behind the scenes episode at the Playboy Mansion. I've had a really hard time recently diagnosed with many health conditions. I feel kind of like a shell of my former self. I, as most people know, I lived in the Playboy Mansion for 10 years and that was hard. He was really the manipulator and didn't want us getting along because that served him better. You know, I was young and thought, you know, I could handle anything and just got in way over my head. Once I left the mansion, I went into therapy for about five years and I realized that the place messed me up more than I thought it did. I wasn't there. It's definitely not my place to accuse anyone of doing anything wrong here. But I will say that based on all of these accounts and accusations, I was actually kind of surprised to hear that the city of LA was willing to put that demo protection on the mansion. It's always interesting to see the people who show up in the comments of these videos. I would love to hear if any of you guys out there either went to the Playboy Mansion parties when they were happening, or if any of you guys out there watching this video are actually working on the Playboy Mansion today and you're a part of this big renovation. If that's you, let me know down in the comments below. I'll do my best to reply to everybody. I'll see you guys next time.